Welcome to the lecture on general concepts in medical parasitology. It's natural for children to have worms. A kid is not a kid if he does not have worms, says a 32-year-old housewife from a city in metropolitan Manila with five children, according to the World Health Organization 2004 Action Against Worms. Now, I, I implore you to think about the, this particular quote and see how much it resonates with you and your own personal beliefs. The objectives of this lecture is to define common terminologies associated with the study of parasitology, enumerate the major classification of parasites and the specific parasites included in them, to identify the components of the life cycle, and appreciate the role of parasitology in medical education. You will be seeing this particular slide throughout the orientation. Know the life cycle of each parasite. If there is one golden rule in studying medical parasitology, this slide summarizes it. Know the life cycle of each parasite. And you will be encountering a lot of the similarly figured, illustrated, similarly illustrated um, figures throughout the, the lecture. And I primarily take my uh, life cycle illustrations from the United States Centers for Disease Control or USCDC, www.dpd.cdc.gov. And their illustrations are very accurate and very easy to understand with actual brief descriptions regarding the life cycle um, somewhere within the page. So I implore you to go to the CDC website and view all the life cycles and the descriptions for each particular parasite that you will be encountering. A parasite is an organism that is dependent on another organism. It derives the benefits from the other organism. However, it may or may not suffer consequences resulting from the particular interaction with the other organism. And that other organism is called a host. A host is defined as an organism in or on which a parasite lives off of. So please be careful in, in defining a parasite host. A parasite may live inside a host or on a host. Endoparasites are parasites which live inside an organism, while ectoparasites are parasites which live outside or on the surface of the host organism. Pathogenic parasites, on the other hand, are parasites that cause direct harm to their host, while commensals are parasites that do not directly cause harm to their host. But please take note the term directly. Some commensals may cause indirect harm to their host. Obligate parasites are parasites that need a host at some stage in their life cycle to complete their development. Now, most medical parasites actually belong to this particular subclassification of obligate parasites. And these include the more commonly known parasites, Ascaris and Trichuris. Facultative parasites, on the other hand, may live off of hosts or may exist in free living form in the environment. Now, some parasites have the ability to actually exclude a host within their life cycle, within their entire life cycle, and may live off of, let's say, eating fungi or bacteria. They may not need a host in order to complete their life cycle. And only a few parasites belong to this subclassification, and this would include the free-living Nigleria. Accidental or incidental parasites are parasites found in a host that is not normally its main host. Most of these parasites are termed zoonotic parasites. So in some references, you might see um, usage of the term zoonotic parasites. These are parasites mainly of other animals that can be seen sort of transferring into humans, but not as their primary host. Spurious parasites, on the other hand, are parasite, parasites which actually just pass through the digestive tract without infecting the host. Now, there is some sort of, of course, um, 
contradiction between the definition of parasites and being spurious if it does not infect the host. The primary example of spurious parasites would be the non-pathogenic intestinal protozoans, which you will be encountering in your GI topics. Now, parasites are generally classified into five major classifications. You have your nematodes, cestodes, trematodes, protozoans, and arthropods well, of medical importance. Nematodes are also called your roundworms. Cestodes are what you call your tapeworms. Trematodes are commonly called your flukes. Protozoans are the amoeba type of parasites. While arthropods are the insect quote-unquote parasites. It is also good to take note that cestodes and trematodes are both flatworms. And cestodes are segmented flatworms while trematodes or flukes are your non-segmented platforms. But please do memorize the parasites belonging to each classification, at least what is listed here in this presentation. At this point, it may be necessary to just memorize at least the genus or the genera of each of the parasites included in this list. For nematodes, we have your Ascaris, Trichuris, Hookworm, Hookworm, by the way, is a common term and not a specific and not a genus name. You have your Strongyloides, Angiostrongylus, Capillaria, Enterobius, Trichinella, Filarial worms, which are again common terms, and Anisakis. For your cestodes, you have your Tania, Diphilobotrium, Hymenolepis, Echinococcus, and Diphilidium. The picture on the upper right hand corner is actually the longest tapeworm, the longest parasite um, ever to infect man. And this is the Diphilobotrium latum, which is the fish tapeworm. Trematodes, on the other hand, would include your Schistosoma, Fasciolopsis, Fasciola, Clonorchis, Opistorchis, Paragonimus, and Echinostoma. Now, it would also be nice to know at this point that most of these trematodes are actually foodborne diseases. And that's why there is a subclassification of parasites called your foodborne trematodes or FBTs. These include almost all of the trematodes listed here except for schistosoma. Schistosoma, by the way, is not a foodborne trematode. For protozoans, you have your plasmodium, which causes malarial disease or malaria. You have entamoeba, jarja, balantidium, cryptosporidium, isospora, nigleria, acanthamoeba, trypanosoma, leishmania, and toxoplasma. This picture here up on the upper right hand corner is an example of your entamoeba, your entamoeba histolytica, which causes your typical amoebiasis. Arthropods, on the other hand, are your quote-unquote insects, which include your mosquitoes, lice, fleas, mites, ticks, and flies. Now, as you will learn in your succeeding lectures, arthropods are not, not really all insects, but they are all arthropods. Arthropods are higher in the taxonomic chain than your insects. Uh, this classification also includes your caterpillars, scorpions, spiders, mainly most of the insects or arthropods which bite humans. This one is a mite. These are microscopic organisms with eight legs, so they do not count as insects, but rather as arthropods. Mm -hmm.